So today we're looking at color management when it comes to cameras. Now, this is going to be an ongoing series until I run out of cameras, of course. So if you want to see a certain camera or a certain color space, leave a comment below and I'm sure we'll get to it. But we're not talking about Rec. 709, we're talking about raw or log footage because we've already done Rec. 709. Plus that really applies to all cameras, that just doesn't apply to a certain camera. So let's jump in Resolve and I'll show you how to do this camera. G'day, welcome back. So one of the requests we got was for the Canon R6 Mark I. Now I'm pretty sure this footage is the Canon R6 Mark I. So full disclaimer, this isn't my footage. I got it off YouTube because I couldn't actually find any other footage that matches this camera. So I'll leave a link below where you can go and download footage from that YouTube channel and you can support them that way. So today we're talking about the Canon R6 Mark I. We're gonna do it a little bit different today. We're gonna do the second color space transform in the timeline here, which is a better way to do it anyway. So in our first node here, we're gonna go down to our color space transform. Now you have the color space transform in the free version resolve, so anyone can do this. For our input color, we're gonna go to Canon Cinema. Input gamma, let's go down to Canon and we can choose one of these logs. So I find that probably three is the one that works the best for me. So we're gonna go with that. Now output color space, we're going to go DaVinci White Gamut, Output Gamma, DaVinci Intermediate. Now, if you want to work in Aces or Ari White Gamut, you just come up here and choose it. So, but we're going to work in DaVinci White Gamut. Now, tone mapping, we want this to be off. We don't want anything to be happening before our last CST. So we want everything to be perfectly untouched before we start our grade. Now, let's go to our timeline up here. And for our last node here, we're going to put that color space transform back on again. Now we know we're working in DaVinci Wide Gamut. So input color space, DaVinci Wide Gamut, input gamma, DaVinci Intermediate. Output color space is Rec. 709. Now output gamma, this depends on your monitor, but for me it's 2.4. If you're on a laptop, maybe you wanna be at 2.2. Or if you're doing it for YouTube, maybe 2.2 is better. Now tone mapping method, we wanna put this to luminance use custom max input. We want to go right up. We don't want to have any clipping or anything like that. As you can see, use custom max output. We can leave as is. Now we want to do gamut mapping method, saturation compression. And that is your color management for the Canon. Now I'm pretty sure this was shot in C-Log. That's why we could do it. So it's not in Rec. 709, but I have to say that this footage in H.264 runs really bad on my computer. Um, it's a bit smooth now, but I found it really hard to work with because H.264 isn't, it isn't a really good um, format to work with. It isn't particularly nice. Now from there, you'd want to start doing your grading. So let's say we want to use a LUT. I've been making LUTs for myself and I'm designing them to work in DaVinci wide gamut. So I know that, so I know that my LUT has to go before this last node. If I was working in Rec. 709, I'd put it after this node. But because I'm working in DaVinci Wide Gamut with my new LUTs, then I work in that way. So we can use this node here. And because I want my node to go on my entire timeline, we can go and choose one. And that's going to put that LUT on my entire timeline. So we can come have a look and see what we want. If we can go for a more saturated look, we can actually go big screen. We can go for more desaturated. We can go for a more filmic look. I really like this look. I built this LUT today. It looks really nice. And we can go for basically the same, but if you notice the flowers up here and the overall saturation of our image, we are desaturating more. Now we can go a little bit more extreme if we really want. We can use this LUT here. It's really changing those colors. I think it's actually changing in too much. <laughs> I probably wouldn't use this LUT, maybe on a special project, so. We can have some look at the other ones I've been working on. So you won't be able to buy these LUTs. I don't think I would ever sell them because so I'd feel a bit weird about it. But I don't know, maybe if you guys are interested in LUTs or anything like that, just let me know and we'll see what we can do. Anyway, let's choose, let's choose, ooh, we'll choose this one here. I like the flowers. Yeah, we'll stick with this one here. So, you know, that's a nice starting point. So from there, we'd want to start our grade. I mean, this is your overall look, right? So your last CST and your LUT, this is going on all your footage in your timeline. So you want to make sure that LUT isn't messing up 
all your other clips. So a good LUT shouldn't damage or um, what's a better word for damage? It shouldn't ruin your other clips. You should be able to put a LUT on and it should work for all your clips most of the time. Now you will get LUTs that are built a little bit differently that won't do that, but a LUT should work on all your clips or it's not worth using that LUT, if that makes sense. So we have our LUT on, we can do like a really quick grade if we wanted to, but this is a color space transform video or a color management video. So we're not gonna go into that, but if you wanna see me do some grading, Using these LUTs, make sure to comment below and I'll see what we can do. Anyway, this is a probably a pretty quick video. So comment below on any other camera that you want to see in the color management and I'm sure I will get to it. Have a fantastic day and thanks for watching and I've been Drew from Haiti Films.